Hello and good day to you. For those that don't know, this is my Pikachu sword. I'm making a Wastelander Pikachu suit of armor thing. This is the sword. It's meant to be shaped like his tail. Um, today I'm going to be making another one because uh, I've there's a lot of mistakes that I made making this one and I only learnt them by making it. Today I'm going to make another one which will hopefully be better because I've learnt from my mistakes. Uh, but I'm not going to keep the one I made today. I'm going to auction it off for charity. Uh, so you could have it. I'll talk a bit more at the end about um, the auctioning part of things. But uh, yeah, basically in my normal video videos, um, there's a lot of wacky edits and me doing funny jokes, but to make them short, I often have to cut out the specifications of how I did certain things and what tools I use and whatnot, and then the comments are full of people asking, what did you use, how did you do this, blah, blah, blah. So this video is going to be a lot longer and less flashy in terms of the edit, but there'll be more talk about how I do certain things, and anyway, let's go. So I am going to be keeping the same basic shape, but the first mistake I made with the last sword is that the handle is way too short for the size of the thing, like it's not weighted properly, it's unbalanced. So this needs to be slightly longer, because I want to keep that the exact same size. Also, I'm going to make the cross guard as a separate piece. In the first one, I cut it out all like uh, one piece, which is fine, but if you actually take hits with it, let's say you get hit by another sword and it hits here and it glances down and hits the cross guard, it's going to snap right off because the grain is going that way. That's actually structurally, that's really a weak way to do things. Just gonna use the file to get into some of these corners. So this corner's pretty like angled, but this one I accidentally made it a little bit curved, and I think they need to be angled for it to look like the tail. Really stark lines. <laughs> Do you guys ever think about the fact that at the company where they make these things, they'd have a whole cabinet full of file files? Just files about how their files are selling? Just a bit of humour. Alright, this is where we're at so far. That's been filed down in the corners and stuff and just gone over with a uh, sandpaper which is 120 grit, so pretty rough. Uh, not really sanded that well just yet. Um, just to get the, the bits off. The next bit I think is going to be notching out these parts uh, where the cross guard's going to go. So first of all I also have to cut that cross guard out. This is where I keep my Pikachu armor. The other day I, with scrap wood I just knocked up this thing to keep it on. I realized after I'd made it that it's actually a cross. So people if they come in here they're just going to think that I worship Pikachu. Which I kind of do. So that will go there. Eventually I need to chop it in half that way. And then notch out bits there that will kind of fit on each side. That's confusing, I'll show you what I mean. The saw that I use, that's a coping saw. Um, you can actually like, you can move this to change the angle of the blade. So it's essentially it's like a jigsaw, but a uh, hand tool. It's pretty much, I use this for everything, cause, apart from like the big cuts. Because again, I'm using really soft pine, so you can maneuver it through like a knife through hot butter. No, hot knife through butter. Basically, knives move pretty easily through butter anyway, despite temperature. Alright, so this bit is now cut into two parts. So one is going to go this side and one is going to go that side. But the smarter people among you will notice that uh, at the moment they do not join up to each other. That's because I need to notch out, make this a bit thinner. Also make some notches and knees and then they fit together. Now because this is really soft wood, I'm just going to be using a knife. I'll use a, a, the coping saw just to get it started. But I'm just going to kind of whittle it out. You see that? Just to get it started.
thing about making like Wastelander costumes or costumes uh, props that are meant to look like they've been out in the desert for a hundred years is you don't want it to look too good because then it's not gonna it's not gonna look right you don't want to make it perfect and then just make it dirty at the end you do have to make some things a little bit wobbly or you do have to put some notches in where usually you would saw straight across so you kind of want it to look a little bit shoddy but not too shoddy that it looks like it's badly made for example you probably saw this handle that's not very straight at all i didn't really bother to make it straight because later on it's going to be wrapped in like ripped up rags and it's not going to be wrapped properly either it's going to look i'm going to intentionally make it look like it was just kind of ripped off a shirt and wrapped on there so i didn't bother making that straight because if it was straight then the ragged rags would make sense Okay, it's the next day, but that's the sword handle with the parts whittled away. These are the bits, they've got their parts whittled away as well. And da -da 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 like so. And you can see they, they fit onto that. It's a bit hard to see, but they will be glued. But the next step is to etch in the markings. It's going to be here, the Pokemon hieroglyphs if you will. Okay, so this is the cross guard as it stands, a separate still. Uh, what I do for the markings is I draw them with a biro, just a normal pen. Um, not for the colour, it's because you can etch in just like an indent, which becomes useful for painting later, because you can uh, get paint to sink into those indents. And again, because it's such a soft wood, not a big problem. So I'm going to do that right now. So basically you just got to really press hard to get a good indent. doesn't matter about the blue ink because that will get painted over later, you won't see it. Alright, done. Who are those Pokemon? Answer in the comments for a chance to win nothing. So on the last sword I didn't actually sharpen any of the edges. Um, with this sword I'm thinking that I want to make one side of it, this side, kind of have a pointed edge and because it's soft pine I'm just gonna again just kind of whittle away at it and then sand the hell out of it. Sand a clock. There's a sick painting I did of the Joker. Alright, so after all the whittling, here's what it looks like. You can't really tell on camera that well that it has kind of a pointed edge. Ow. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give this a layer of um, chrome spray paint. Um, and then I'm going to cover it in kind of a, enamel. And then when I go over with the yellow later, if you scratch the yellow, like weather it, Underneath it will show silver, so it will give the illusion that it's actually metal that has been painted yellow as opposed to wood that's been painted silver and then yellow. You'll see later. I read about a, uh, a thing once, a method to make wood look like metal is you spray paint it, then you sand it with a really fine grit and you spray paint it again, then you sand it, you just do it a bunch of times and it works pretty well, so that's basically what I'm doing now. Alright, just about to go over the um, silver paint now with the matte spray, I don't know if that's going to focus on that. Um, basically, I use this a lot, it's not really made for this kind of building, it's more for craft stuff, but it works really well. It's basically just an invisible little kind of plastic layer um, that you can put between paints. It kind of helps to soak paint all together as well if you're mixing stuff. I don't know, it works really well. So basically, yeah, I'm going to go over the silver uh, just to kind of seal it and separate it from the yellow so when the yellow chips off, instead of chipping off both the yellow and the silver paint, the yellow will just chip off and leave the silver paint underneath. Now it's time for yellow. Sunflower, sun power? Oh, I thought it was called sunflower, whatever. It's yellow. All right, it's the next day. Uh, I didn't film it, but that's been attached with contact cement and left and clamped and left to set overnight. So it should be stuck on there good. Oh damn. <laughs>
You can see there's lots of gaps to fill. I'll be using some focus. Nah, it's not going to focus. I'll be using some wood filler to fill the gaps. That'll be the next step. There is a big gap here because I didn't film it again, but I changed the cross guard that I used. The one I had uh, that I showed cutting out was actually too big. Um, but that's fine because the wrapping will cover that up so you won't know. Just to be able to fill that up with the fabric that I used to wrap the handle. But now, to fill these gaps. Uh, what am I going to use for this? This can be sanded later on. Alright, that's the uh, wood cement. The gap filler is just drying. In my... Uh, Shed here, I like to keep a harmonica. Um, <laughs> screwed up the last bit. That was meant to be piano, man. Okay, here's what the wood filler looks like when it's all sanded. Not particularly pretty yet, but it's ready now for the acrylic. Okay, so that's the first uh, burst of the base coat um, there. While it's drying, I'll show you what I was talking about before, how I did the silver underneath the yellow. Then when you scratch it for your sandpaper, just give it like a, some weathering. See, underneath it reveals, that's not really showing up in camera that well, but see if I can hold it closer. Yeah, focus. It looks like it's been scratched in battle and it's revealing the metal underneath. Um, instead of being scratched, I did a bit more over here as well. Kind of looks like it's metal that's been scratched and not a piece of wood. Around my building area, there's little leftover bits and pieces from other videos I've done. There's, uh, there's Misty and Ash's head from a video I did where I was testing out my other sword. This is the leftovers of a Deathstroke mask I tried to make by uh, modifying a bike helmet. Didn't work. So there will be another layer of grey going on later. I know it looks patchy. It's meant to at the moment. Um, how you get these etchings, or how I get them sharp, is get quite a thin tipped brush that comes to a point. Just go over with the black acrylic, pretty roughly, but make sure it gets right in there. Then just use some old cloth to dab, dab away the excess. And the black left over should kind of etch in and sink into the gaps. And if black gets smudged all around, that's okay, because I'm going to weather this thing later anyway. Alright, so I've been doing a lot more uh, sanding just with a really light grit just to get those weathering markings to look like you can see the metal underneath. What I'm doing now is just adding some water to this uh, cloth here and dipping it in black acrylic paint and then just rubbing it in, sinks into all the cracks, brings out some of the weathering. Okay, so to cover up this join, I'm going to cut a very small strip of this craft foam and contact cement it on. Contact cement it, is what I meant to say, and then weather it up with some paint. So now it's time to wrap the handle old t-shirt. Now to keep this wrapping in place I'm gonna be using my old friend super glue. Um, it's not the cleanest thing but that's the main reason I use it. It kind of eats away at the material and gives this really crappy old worn look that I accidentally discovered while making the wrapping on my last sword. 
So I'm gonna do it again. This is just watered down like a grey acrylic, just soaks into the material, makes it look a lot more old and weathered. Now it's time for one of the final steps, which is adding the blood, which I'm going to do with whatever the hell colour this is when it focuses, gloss cherry red. Um, basically you hold the can about a foot away and just kind of lightly press it down so it doesn't come out properly, it comes out in splatters. If you were doing spray paint properly, you would hate that, but for blood, it's perfect. Alright, so that's the sword pretty much completed. Um, the fabric wrap, I had these little two like things tied in a knot that hang off. No point, I just think that kind of looks cool. Uh, it should be said as well that I don't really know anything about woodworking. You probably um, work that out if you do know something about it and you're watching this. But I don't really like to be taught things formally. I just prefer to do them a hundred times wrong to learn how to do it right. And this was just really to learn, I think I learned from making stuff. So is this the best sword in the world? Hell no. But it is what it is. Um, so basically, yeah, I'm going to be auctioning, auctioning this off for charity. There is a link in the description uh, for the eBay bidding war. Um, the charity and stuff will be linked down there too. I guess you want to see me testing it out, right? Here's Misty from popular television show Pokemon. Anyway, thanks for watching.